In this lesson, we'll consider the general univariate binary Gaussian detection problem and we'll examine the special situations when the data have equal variances and equal means and we'll examine the general situation of unequal variances and means. Well, for a univariate Gaussian hypothesis test, we envision n independent, identically distributed samples of a Gaussian random variable where, under hypothesis 0, the mean and standard deviation are mu0 and sigma0, and under hypothesis 1, the mean is mu1 and the standard deviation is sigma1. Now it's convenient to begin with a simple pre-processing of the data where we subtract the mean for hypothesis 0 and then divide by the standard deviation for hypothesis 0. Now this gives us a situation where hypothesis 0 corresponds to a standard normal random variable and hypothesis 1 is a Gaussian random variable with a mean equal to mu1 minus mu0 divided by sigma0 and a standard deviation equal to sigma1 divided by sigma0. Accordingly, the probability density for the observations under hypothesis 1 is the product of n densities with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. And the density under hypothesis 0 is the product of n standard normal distributions. Now using those densities, the log likelihood ratio test would look like this, where the decision threshold eta might be defined by the Bayes costs and priors or could be selected to specify a particular false alarm or detection probability. Well now, if we expand the square inside the summation and then move all the terms that don't depend on the data to the right hand side of the inequality, we would get a decision rule that looks like this. And we might rewrite that in terms of two decision statistics, S1 and S2 where the decision statistic S1 is the sum of the observations, which would be a normal random variable with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation, the square root of n under hypothesis 0, and it would have a mean equal to n times the parameter mu, and a standard deviation equal to the square root of n times the parameter sigma under hypothesis 1. The statistic S2 is the sum of the squares of these pre-processed data, and that would have a chi-squared distribution with n degrees of freedom under hypothesis 0, and when properly normalized, would have a non-central chi-squared distribution under hypothesis 1, provided that the two means are not equal. Now sometimes we'll encounter a situation when the two standard deviations, or the variances, are equal. In this case, the parameter sigma will be equal to 1, so that the coefficient that multiplies S2 would be 0, as well as one of the terms in the decision threshold. Well, this results in decision rule that depends only on the decision statistic S1. Now, if mu1 is greater than mu0, then the parameter mu will be greater than 0. And the densities for the test statistic might look like this, where the blue line shows the density under hypothesis 0 and the red line shows the density under hypothesis 1. Now the mean under hypothesis 0 will be 0, and the mean under hypothesis 1 is n times the parameter mu. And the standard deviation under both hypotheses is the square root of n. Now when mu1 is less than mu0, then mu will be negative, and the density for h1 would be to the left of the density for h0. But back to the case when mu1 is greater than mu0 and mu is positive, we can move the factor 2 times mu over sigma squared to the right-hand side, and for the purposes of analyzing the receiver operating characteristic for this situation, we can compress the threshold terms into a single threshold. Accordingly, the false alarm and detection probabilities can be computed with the complementary error function or the standard error function or the Gaussian cumulative distribution function if those are available, and those can be used to plot the receiver operating characteristic. Here for example are the ROCs for situations when the signal to noise ratio is 0.5, 1, and 2 where the signal to noise ratio is 
is defined as the square root of n times the parameter mu, which is the difference between the means divided by the common standard deviation for both hypotheses. Well, in some other situations, the means for the hypotheses might be equal, so that the parameter mu would be equal to zero. In this case, the coefficient for the decision statistic S1 will be zero, as will one of the terms in the decision threshold, and this would result in a decision rule that only depends on the test statistic S2. Now, if sigma 1 is greater than sigma 0, the parameter sigma will be, will be greater than 1, and the densities for the test statistic might look like this, where the blue line is the density for H1, and the red line is the density for H0. Now, if sigma 0 is greater than sigma 1, then the plots would be reversed. Now, for our example, though, let's suppose that sigma 1 is greater than sigma 0, so that the coefficient that multiplies S2 will be positive. Well, in that case, we could absorb that term over into the threshold without changing the directions for the decision inequalities. And the decision test statistic might look like this. Now, to analyze the receiver operating characteristic, we'd use the fact that the density for S2 under hypothesis 0 is a chi-square with n degrees of freedom. So that the false alarm probability is 1 minus the cumulative distribution for a chi-square evaluated at the threshold. Now because the distribution under H1 corresponds to a scaled chi-square, we can get a similar form for the detection probability where this probability depends on the parameter sigma, which is the ratio of sigma 1 to sigma 0. Now in terms of more familiar functions, the cumulative distribution function for the chi-square distribution with n degrees of freedom is the ratio of an incomplete gamma function to a gamma function. And using these expressions, we could evaluate the receiver operating characteristic for various situations. Here, for example, are plots where the number of observations are 1, 2, 5, or 10, and the ratio of the variances take values of 1, 2, 5, and 10 also. Well now, returning to the more general situation that happens when both the means and the variances are unequal, so that mu is not equal to 0 and sigma is not equal to 1. Now for purposes of analyzing the receiver operating characteristic, we could compress all the right-hand side terms into a single threshold, and then will represent the left-hand side as a linear combination of the two decision statistics, where the vector a depends on the parameters mu and sigma, and the vector s contains the two decision statistics. Now, because the combined decision statistic is difficult to analyze analytically, we could use the Monte Carlo method to evaluate the receiver operating characteristic. Here, for example, is a segment of MATLAB code that might be used to evaluate the receiver operating characteristic for a situation with particular values for the mean mu, for sigma squared, and for n, the number of elements in the observation. Of course, you could use some other language, but this will show the process for processing the data to, you, to implement the Monte Carlo method. Well, the first segment of code might generate k, where k would be some, perhaps a million, several hundred thousand trials of data corresponding to the two hypotheses. y0 would contain k trials of the n element observations with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. y1 would contain k trials of the n element observations with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of the square root of sigma squared. Then we could sum the n elements of the data for each trial and sum the squares of the data for each trial to determine the decision statistics for each hypothesis for each trial. Then we could make the coefficient vector a according to the specified values for mu and sigma squared, and we could use that to compress the data into a single decision statistic for each trial. Based on those, we could use the smallest value for the decision statistics of either hypothesis 0 or hypothesis 1 to specify the smallest threshold we would need
and we would use the largest value to specify the largest threshold. And then finally, we'd specify the range of thresholds and loop through those to compute the false alarm and detection probabilities for each of the thresholds. Now using this code, we could evaluate the receiver operating characteristics for any particular situation. Here, for example, is the situation when mu is equal to 1 and sigma squared is equal to 2, and we have 10 elements in the observation. Now the dashed lines show the error bars for the Monte Carlo simulation, which correspond to plus and minus three standard deviations, or RMS values, for each of the probability estimates. Now because the Monte Carlo method estimates the probabilities through a binomial process, the estimates are binomial random variables, and the RMS values can be computed by using the expression for the variance of a binomial random variable. Now in a subsequent lesson, we'll generalize this analysis to the situation when the observations are multivariate Gaussian random vectors.